Let's talk about verification. Um, you know, if you're just doing things like drag and drop in Finder or, or Windows Explorer, and you are comparing total file sizes, great idea, sort of. Um, the problem with that is that in Finder, for example, Finder is only going to report to you the allocated space that, you know, of the copy. So it's going to tell you back that, oh yeah, they're always the same because it, it allocated the same amount of space that it needed uh, to copy the files to. So unless something really catastrophic happens, you know, Finder isn't really going to tell you that the two files match. Sure, total file sizes may be a little, you know, give you some indication, but it's not really a good verification process. The other thing, as I mentioned before, is that Spotlight is, uh, works with hidden files. It has a little index file that um, it is going to have some size to it. And when you copy, you know, you're not copying that hidden file. It has to create it again. So your total file count, you know, how many files are in one place or the other, may be different because you're not copying the hidden file, or the sizes of the hidden file may be different. Um, so in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we always tell people don't copy the hidden files. There's really no reason to do that. And in fact, if your card or media hasn't been reformatted entirely, it's, it's just been erased and not reformatted uh, in the camera or whatever, then <clears throat> you're copying a lot of hidden files that are just marked for deletion, but you're unnecessarily copying files that are no value to you. We always use um, checksums and, and what that means is checksums is a type of uh, algorithm that looks at a file's contents and its byte count and byte position and comes up with a numeric binary number that describes that file, that size and content of that file. So. It is mathematically uh, very uh, high probability that if two files have the same checksum that they're identical. Uh, it's astronomical. It's more than winning the lottery. So uh, it's a very good way to determine that the files are indeed exactly the same, regardless of how they're named or, you know, uh, what Finder tells you, uh, those sorts of things. By the way, back on the Finder discussion a little bit, if you're comparing media files, for example, um, any card reader has to uh, install a driver and you're looking at the contents of the card through that, that driver that talks to Finder. So it's very important that you have the latest version of the driver that matches your operating system. Um, but again, that's why you're not, you know, it's not a really good comparison because it's a virtual uh, representation. It's not the same as a hard disk. Um, and so you always want to make sure that you have the correct and most up-to-date drivers and, and those sorts of things. Um, so check some types. There's many different kinds. Uh, I think we have half a dozen in our apps, and I'm sure there's many others out there. Um, and a lot of them have different uses uh, over the years. They come out for things for like communication protocols and, and those sorts of things. The most common in our industry is either MD5 or the newer XX hash. Um, these two are, you know, we kind of standardize on those because of their, their speed and, and flexibility. Uh, MD5 is more CPU intensive type checksum process, uh, whereas XX Hash actually uses your computer's RAM. So if you have a computer with faster RAM, like the new Mac Pro desktops, um, you're going to get a little faster throughput with XX Hash. Um, and also, XX Hash is more forgiving and more useful for um, situations where you have lots of files, like uh, raw files uh, where there's tens of thousands of files instead of just a few big ones. Um, lastly, you know, it's a good idea to play the clips. 
um, you know, have some kind of player where you can go in and, and sample the clefs and look at the beginning, the middle, the end, just to kind of look at it and make sure that the files weren't corrupt coming in because you, if you just copied a corrupt file, then they may exactly match, but it's still corrupt. Or, you know, a little quality control, make sure there isn't an audio boom coming into your scene or something like that. But playing the clips is not a, you know, a good um, way of telling that you have good files necessarily, you know, or, or that it's matching the originals. It's simply another layer of making sure that you're, you're getting something good coming out of your, your camera. Uh, again, my name is Dan Montgomery with Imagine Products. Thanks.